<laughs> Hi, welcome to the New Week Samurai Plus One video podcast. I'm your host, Steph, also known as the New Samurai over on Ravelry. And with me today is our boy, Roland. Um, we got a bib on to prevent or protect the clothes from the drool. And I thought we'd give it a try in his jumper since that's his favorite place to be these days. It, six weeks old. He spends a good bit of time in there jumping around, playing with things. So we'll see how much of the show he gets through. <laughs> right, Roland? Right? Yeah. So um, first up, I want to say thank you to everyone so much. Thank you for all of the advice about um, dishcloth patterns and what to knit. And I just want to say thank you. I've got my 20 mule team borax. <laughs> I, I have to read what to do with it, but this should help with the smelly dishcloths that I talked about. And then um, a couple other people did say give the dishcloths a vinegar soak to get the laundry detergent out of them. And that's what's causing the smell. So I'm, I know my mom has done the vinegar soak and that hasn't been as successful for her as it was for other people. So I'm hoping that this is going to be the key and we will revive all of the old dead dying dishcloths. So I got that this morning. So I'll try it out this week and let you know how it works for me. Um, last time, oh, I didn't bring them in. Okay. I'm not going again, either. <laughs> I was working on um, just the grandmother's washcloths. Um, I love it. Something about pacifiers makes them weighted so that they land this part up. So. I figure if it's fast enough and if the room is clean enough, you can get it off the floor and give it back to him. And what he's holding right now is a vibrating strawberry that's for teething. Um, one of my girlfriends recommended that that would be a perfect um, tool for him, and it's great. So he puts it in his mouth and then bites down, and when he bites, it vibrates. I don't know if you can hear that, but he thought that was the greatest thing ever yesterday. So, And we do have a bottom tooth. One bottom tooth! It's coming in, so... At his checkup for six week, six months, the doctor um, was like, anytime you're ready to start solids in a sippy cup and working him onto that. And by nine months, he should have two meals a day that are solid. So it was just like, oh my God, my baby is not a little tiny baby anymore. No, that's his monkey. <laughs> Over there. Anyway, I could tell you what all the toys are on his thing because I love to go toy shopping. And Steve keeps making fun of me that, you know, why is mommy buying mommy toys? <laughs> but I get a kick out of them. There's so many cool things. So many cool things, right? I sure drools a lot. Anyways, dishcloths. So I was working on um, just the regular standby grandmother's dishcloth pattern that's like the go-to. I'm looking at my notes to try and see where I wrote about it. I didn't. Okay. So instead of that, I... And I got lots of suggestions. I tried the mitered square one. I wasn't crazy about the way it was looking. I don't know if I was having a hard time remembering which row I was on. So I was increasing like every row instead of every other row. Or then I'd miss a row. So go through. It just didn't look good proportionally. So I didn't want to carry on with that. So I thought about it some more. And I got lots of other great suggestions. Thank you. And I will try them. But it came to me. Why can't this be like the quilt? The spiral quilt that I just made knit for Roland? where you start at the center and work your way out. Why can't I do a dishcloth like that? So I thought about an, a simple pattern that would use about the same size needles. And I remembered the barn raising quilt from the book Knit Along. And so I pulled out my copy of that. There's a quick, easy, all right, here's where my increases go, directions to follow, basically. That's all I needed. And um, I cast on for that, and instead of making a stockinette product, I'm making a garter stitch product, so knit a row, purl a row, right, knitting in the round, knit around, purl around, and this is what I have so far. So I used up all of the leftovers of this color and then started in with the, the real hot, hot salmon color for an edging, and I'm just going to go until it fits my hand. It feels like about the right size. I think I should do another two rows, and then it'll be the right size. So it, mine is having, a, and I don't know, I didn't, I've read the instructions then just cast on and I haven't gone back to them. So I might not be following the increases exactly the way the barn raising squares are knit, but 
because of course I do like that spiral look. So they are twirling out. I don't know if you can see them the way that they're going, but um, it should have a square edge instead of that weird lip that the spiral quilt had. The up art, I'm calling it spiral. It's not, it's the up art pattern. Anyways, yes, yeah. He's captivated by this. And also there's a cat sitting right there and cats are the most amazing thing in the world. So that's what I have to say about dishcloths. Um, while we're sitting here with Roland and let's stay on the Roland topic, I cast on a pair of Roland socks. So I took the, no, we don't have one in here. I can't show you. The smart wool socks that I had for him for, I think they're size six months to a year. They're, he's six months now and they're not going to go forward much longer, like maybe another week and then we're done with them. Actually, we should be done with them now. I'm just giving myself time to finish knitting a couple pairs of these to replace them. But um, I cast on, I basically just mimicked it, made it look the same. So this very square toe, that's just the way that the smart wool socks are a very pointed heel which baby's heels are very pointed and then um, I did this a little differently but I did a two by two rib on the top of the sock I carried that all the way up the leg but I did I increased oh, one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna say 14 stitches I have it written down somewhere on the back to give it a little bit of calf shaping I don't know if you can see that if I put my hand in and it, it's a dark color. It might not be great. Um, to get a little bit of calf shaping. Because baby calves are like massively, like they have these cankles and then <laughs> it blows up. So these fit him perfect. Like I put them on and they're great. Um, they're very stretchy. Very stretchy, huh? Very stretchy. At the top. So they go on and they sit well. I'm not sure how well they're going to stay on. I'd like to get some a little bit more elastic at the top. I am using Knit One Crochet Two um, Socks Appeal, which is a, I believe it's 2% elastic yarn. The rest of it's merino. I'm going to tell you wrong. I'm going to purposely mislead you. No. No, I'm not. I'm going to find my ball band and tell you exactly what they are. They are 96% superwash wool, a 3% nylon, and 1% elastic. Um, some of the other elastic yarns that I have have the 98. Anyways, 96, 3, and 1. So um, maybe 1% isn't enough elastic. Maybe I need a yarn that has a little more elastic. Maybe I need to decrease the stitches at the top. <laughs> for that last half an inch. I hope that isn't too loud. I'll have to preview it. Um, for that last half an inch and then see if um, it goes better. With, if it sits tighter, a little more snug with fewer stitches there. So the first one's done. Obviously I have an end bobbling around. I have a toe for the second one. And this yarn is great. I bought it for me, but it's a purple navy plum violet color. It's really pretty. And he doesn't care if he wears purple and navy or just straight up navy. Right, Roland? Right? I think we could probably say, I think that up. See, he's wearing navy today. <laughs> I tried really hard for a long time not to put him in the stereotypical baby blue clothing. Sorry, this is going to be a heavy Roland episode. I can't help it. He's sitting next to me. I love talking about it. Did he put the pacifier in his mouth or did I? Uh, I don't know. Anyways, I tried not to buy him blue clothing, but you know, Roland, look over here, honey. Look over here. Can you guys see those eyes? They are so bright blue, and when he wears blue or teal, they look gorgeous. So, I'm turning into that kind of mother. Anyways, what else is going on? On Saturday, I got bored. So, s s Thursday, it snowed like crazy, so Mommy called in, snowed in. And then Friday, Mommy worked from home. And yay, come Saturday, <laughs> come Saturday, I'm looking if there's a quietish toy on here. It really isn't. It's just bouncing. All right, well, hopefully it doesn't drive you crazy. And if it does, skip this episode and move on to the next one. I don't have anything that important to say. So I, by Saturday afternoon, I was just like, oh, get me out of this house. I'm so sick of being here. So I went over to my LYS in South Margot. She's a sweetheart. 
and um, walked around and did some chatting about babies and she has two little kids so it was nice to talk to her about that and I picked up some new yarn um, I'm gonna be completely all over the place so this is dreaming color dusky Aurora <laughs> and it is like all the cool colors that you could think of purple blue green but it's beautiful it's absolutely beautiful so I bought a scan of that and I had a 20% off coupon so of course I'm gonna buy a little more heavy than I would have otherwise um, I went into the Cascade 220 and as I was saying before I really like Roland in blue his current um, outdoor hat is a sock. He has one hat that fits him right now. And it's a socks that rock rainbow. It's basically red is the primary color of that hat. And um, he grabs a hold of the front of it and he pulls it down over his eyes. And it's just a regular beanie. And then he gets upset because he's got this hat over his eyes. So it's just stop doing that, Roland. So I had previously knit him the helmet hat. I think I talked about it. That's not the official name. It's one of Margot's designs. And um, you use size three needles and I think sport weight yarn. So I picked out a worsted weight yarn. She single up a needle size. I'm going to knit him a second one that will turn out bigger. She said, don't worry about it. It'll come out perfectly fine proportionally because of the way the pattern's written. So he'll have this on his head soon enough. What do you think, Roland? What do you think? It matches your eyes. Some of the cat has moved over there. So. <laughs> so I got that. And then I have never seen this before. I've seen Pagewood Farms, but I have never seen Chujika. C-H-U-G-I-A-K. It's 100% merino, superwash, 450 yards. I think it was something ridiculous, like 20 bucks. I couldn't pass it out. 20 bucks and then 20% off. And it, the twist, it's like a highly twisted yarn. It reminds me a lot of um, Claudia hand paints. So 450 yards, 4 ounces. It is called Meadow, this colorway, which is like a, a green teal color. Imagine. Hey, buddy. Hey, you want to hold the yarn? Oh, yeah. Everyone says, I have opinions on this yarn. <laughs> he just perped. <laughs> so, um, I've never used this before, but it reminds me of Claudia. Did I say that? It reminds me of Claudia hand pants, anyways, because of the twist. And I love the color, and it will make a perfect shawl. So I had to buy that, too. And I bought the, most, the two most current knit scenes. I guess the most current and the one before. <laughs> Another way to put that. Um, I haven't looked at those yet. I also purchased a new necklace. So this is pewter, which I thought was interesting. And it says, it's a little square, and it says, get your knit on, exclamation point. So that's my new necklace. What is about knitters? Like, if you watch a lot of the podcasts, you'll see so many of us have little necklaces around our necks. I don't know. Maybe it's not knitters. Maybe it's just women in general. And then what else did I buy you? I picked up another skein of Opal Rainforest, which is my favorite workhorse sock yarn. This is the Sinbad colorway, and it's mostly purple. Purples and pinks. I could see this for me or my mother-in-law. I, I don't know. Something about this. She doesn't wear girly colors. She wears a lot of black with jeans and then, like, green and jeans. Like, she's just, she has a great outdoor um, job where she can dress very casually and um, just wears a lot of t-shirts and comfy clothes and hand it socks a lot of the time. She doesn't wear purple. I don't know. Like she's not a super feminine lady, but for some reason I see this yarn and I think of her. So I got that. And lastly, which is why I started talking about what I purchased, I got three skeins of the Dream in Color Gothic Rose, which is this beautiful, um, maroon colored yarn but it has highs and lows and a lot of it um is you know deep dark reds and plum and oh it's just gorgeous you can see a little bit of the variation in there hopefully of the color variation it's gorgeous so the reason i bought this yarn is i had picked up all my purchases i was ready to go getting my discount check it out roland was in his um in his stroller is starting to fuss a little bit but he was doing okay and as I'm heading towards I turn and I look at the door and next to the door there is a shop model hanging and it's this beautiful vesti cardigan thing and it's all kinds of lace work and I was just like stop 
the presses. I need to know what that is. What is it? Tell me, Margo. I want it. And so she goes over, pulls up the pattern on Ravelry. It's the Watershed Pattern by Amy Swanson. And I'm like, okay, I need it. I need it. I think the power just went off. Yeah, the house just got really quiet. Huh. Um, so she helps me um, figure out yardage for my size. And the shop model was actually knit in this gothic rose dreaming color. And I was like, I'll take it. I'll take enough. And I'm just going to go home and do it. And <laughs> I went home. And it was a for pay pattern downloadable on Ravelry. So unfortunately, I couldn't get it at the shop. But uh, I got home and opened up the pattern on Ravelry. And it says, you know, over in the corner, in your library. I'm like, what? It's in my library? And I go and I look. And I, I don't remember buying this. Fiber Nymph had gifted it to me for Christmas or New Year's, you know, in that time period. So thank you very much, Lisa. You gave me something I didn't even know I really wanted, and now I'm so excited to have it. So, <laughs> so I cast on that night, and it's great. You do this edging. I don't know if there was a huge knit along or what, if I'm just late to the party, but um, yeah, so I'm doing the size 46, which is probably going to be snug for me, but I did add six inches in this um in the stockinette portion on the sides three on each side so that's basically another inch so it makes it more like a 47 inch bust um i'm doing what a lot of other people i read people's pattern notes and a good bit of people substituted some ssks for knit two together through the back loop so i did that and the other thing i read that people were doing was always doing Substituting the um, Pearl 2 Together yarn over, substituting yarn over Pearl 2 Together for all of those so that you consistently do one thing in the pattern, which makes it much easier, and I can't really tell the difference in the finished result. So I'm doing that. What else have I made for mods? So this is Dream in Color Classic Gothic Rose. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy. <clears throat> Gothic Rose. I am knitting on US size 7, 4.5 millimeter needles. Um, and as you can see, the pattern, it's an eight row lace repeat on the edges. And then the center panel has them, has the lace. And then on the opposite edge, obviously. So each one of these comes to a point every eight rows. And I'm sure that looks great against my red but the points are addictive. You just want to get to the next point. Hurry up, get to the next point, next point, next point. So I have been flying through this thing and um, it, the pattern itself is a crop sweater. I'm not, or cropped. She calls it a cardigan. It looks like a vest to me. It has like this tiniest cap sleeves ever. And, um, and then it's just loose in the front, hangs open. So, I'm going to think, I'm going to call it more of a vest, but, um, I'll hold it this way so you can see a little more of the lace edging. So you do the lace edging and then you pick up along one side to knit the body and you knit up from it. So it's definitely different directional knitting, which keeps it interesting. The pattern calls for, sorry, brains all over the place. It's, um, so it's a crop vest and it calls for my size. I should knit that much and then start split off for the armholes. I'm actually like two rows past where I should have split off for the armholes. I'm sitting down right now. I don't know how much you can see, but if I had done that, it would be, um, yeah, I would have about, oh, from here to the tip of my finger. So what is that? That's like eight inches. No, that's not eight inches. That's like six inches of uh between the edge of that and where my jeans start and i'm not um i don't want to advertise my muffin top thank you <laughs> i don't want to be like yes this ends and then i bow out and then my jeans start so i'm gonna make this go at least to the top of my jeans i'm thinking that instead of doing the four points called for in the pattern i'm going to do at least eight probably ten which i have 150 yards extra i'm not sure if that's enough um, the shop had, she had a ton. Oh, Linus, 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 good boy. Um, she had four or five other skeins, same dye lot, same batch, whatever, um, in the shop. So if I can 
buzz through this fast enough this weekend that I'll know if I'm going to need more, I can run in and get another skein. And um, that'll be that. So, very exciting new project. I have this much left on my first skein, and two, so this and two to go. So, we'll see how I go, but it's been really, really fun. It's been really, really fun! So, that's that. Um, what else have we been working on? Have I been working on? I cast on something new, and I'm going to rip it out. <laughs> so, I really wanted those one of those big infinity scarves. I think I mentioned this last time around. So, I found the pattern, the Gaptastic Cowl by Jen Gigley, Gigley. I cast on using Barocco Vintage Chunky, which, um, and size 11 needles, the pattern called for a, I don't know if it's bulky, whatever the yarn, one size bigger yarn, and size 13 needles. I tend to knit loose anyways, but I cast on a few extra stitches, like 30 extra stitches, just to make sure it was going to be long enough to have that big drapey look that, you know, everybody wants these days. And I started the pattern. The pattern is um, very simple, mindless. Through no fault of the patterns, I don't like doing the stitches, you know, doing a, a metric ton of seed stitch. I've actually been watching Stockinette Zombies. I hadn't watched them before. They're very funny. I'm catching up on their back episodes. And it, the reason I hadn't watched them was I was like, Stockinette Zombies, what do they do? Knit dishcloths all the time? Thank you. It's got to be really simple stuff. Well, yeah, I can trash on that, but I like knitting stockinette. <laughs> I like knitting simple stuff. You can make beautiful things just by doing stockinette, whether it's flat or in the round. So, anyways, I prefer stockinette to seed stitch. So, this is how much of it I got. I got about an inch. It's supposed to be, I think, 15 inches long. It's a free pattern over on Ravelry, so I'm not giving away the farm here telling you too much about it. But, um,. Let's see what it would have looked like. So it would have been like this, and then you twist it over, and it has all the fabric, and it looks beautiful. But now I'm seeing that this would not have been long enough. I would have wanted it. Oh, maybe it would have blocked up. I don't know. Either way, it is boring. And it's the stitches, the yarn, the color. I grab something from my stash, which is always good to try and do. Just why did I buy the stash yarn? I wanted to knit it. But... Um, I think I bought this thinking of a baby sweater for a boy while I was pregnant. I think that was what my original purpose had been. I don't think that this taupe gray color near my, it's not gray. It's, um, it's like a very fawn. It's the fawn color. Fawn heather is what I would have called it. Um, near my face is going to be great. And this was the only bulky yarn I had in my stash that would go with both my red wool jacket and my black down jacket, the, which are the two I alternate wearing to work, and this was really more of a work, you know, thing. Plus, it's March. It's March 7th. It's, no, nope, it's not March 7th. It's March 9th, and it's a glorious, it was 70 degrees here yesterday. Do you want to knit a scarf when it's 70 degrees? No. And is this going to be the style next year? I don't know. So, I'm going to call it quits on this guy. Oh, you lost it. Try this, try playing with that. Maybe that'll be fun. So, frogged. Done. Moving on. Um, yeah. <laughs> I didn't put that much work into it anyway, so I don't feel too, too bad ripping it out. Although that cast on of... Because size 11 needles are so completely different than the majority of what I knit on. You know, I'll knit on sock needles, which are... I'm making a total mess here. I'm sorry on sock needles and the amount you need to pull out to cast on those 60 plus stitches is much 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 less than what you need to cast on 160 or so stitches so it took me three shots to get this right and you can see I had a little bit all wound off because that last time I was like forget this I'm just gonna rip out a bunch of yarn <laughs> and cast it on until it's on so, you're dropping everything my man you're dropping everything. Look, she's right there. Clackety clack. This is actually the longest he's been quiet in this. Like, usually the music thing is going and he's jamming away on them and doing all kinds of fun things. So, 
Um, I should not be wasting time doing this. I should be moving on to the next.